Nasdaq stock has been on a roll, gaining more than 80 percent in the past year. But it had a rocky first quarter and now has ambitious growth plans to expand its massive screens around the world, especially in China and other emerging markets. For more on IMAX, we're joined now by the company's CEO, Rich Gelfond, who joins us from the Milken Conference at the Beverly Hilton. Rich, welcome to Bloomberg West. So first of all, uh, you did have a disappointing first quarter, yet your stock is trading near a 52-week high. How can you be so sure that the rest of the year is going to be that much better? Well, Emily, you may characterize it as a disappointing first quarter. I thought it was actually an excellent first quarter, and so did our shareholders, because our stock went up almost $2 when we announced the results. It's true we missed on the bottom line, but we signed 101 new theaters during the first quarter, which was more than our budget for the whole year. And if you look at the IMAX plan, it's really to build our network platform around the world, and then as the network grows, run the films through the platform. And long term, that leads to increased revenues, increased earnings, increased EBITDA. So I think we're on a roll right now. So, Rich, there are fewer TVs in homes for the first time in 20 years. DVD sales are down. People are watching content differently. They're watching it on computers. They're watching it on their, their iPads. How do you compete with that and convince people to go to the movies? Actually, I think that helps us a lot. I think the more people watch things on smaller screens, whether it's iPads or iPhones, the more that content is available in, in the home, the more that gaming is available in the home, people look for things to do when they leave the home. And I think they don't want something similar. They want something very different. And IMAX offers a very differentiated premium experience. And in fact, we've been in business for 43 years. Our box office from our 42nd year to our 43rd year, 2009 to 2010, doubled from $300 million to $600 million. So I think consumers are telling us that for something special, they really will leave the home. Hey, Rich, Corey Johnson here in Pasadena. Uh, last I saw you was actually at the Roth Co Capital Conference uh, in, in Southern California a couple, about a year ago. And the big question was how many IMAX movies are going to get made? Are you facing new uh, uh, acceptance with the studios with your movies? And what, what kind of numbers do you expect for the, co the rest of 2011 and 2012 in, in terms of how many movies you'll have available to you? It, Corey, it's actually an embarrassment of riches for us to some extent because we bring incremental revenues to the uh, to the studio and, and additional film goers go to it. So this year we'll release more than 20 films and as we go into the summer season we uh, we released Fast Five this weekend which did over $8 million on about 240 IMAX screens. We introduced Thor this weekend, Pirates of the Caribbean a, the, a few weeks after that. Then we have Super 8, we have Cars, we have Transformers, we have Harry Potter. Later in the year, Happy Feet, uh, Mission Impossible 4. So pretty much all of the films this year, you know, that the best blockbuster films. So we say more to many more films than we, we say yes to. The studios want to take as much IMAX as they can get. Rich, what do you expect in terms of growth rate and the number of movies that are going to be out there for you to exhibit that? Do you expect that, you know, that number's grown in the last few years. Does that start to trail off? What do you expect the growth rate to be, let's say, 2012 compared to 2011 and the number of movies available to you? See, we're pretty much maxed out on movies because we really play them two to three weeks. And if you look at the 20 films we have this year, that fills the whole year. Uh, the IMAX story really is one of screen growth around the world, how fast you can build the network. So to give you a sense of that, when we introduced The Dark Knight in 2008, it was on 149 theaters in the world. And this year, including our backlog, we have 175 theaters in China alone. So our network is on a 30% compound growth rate kind of trajectory. So you take a fixed number of movies and you put them on this growing base. And that's what gives you a, a broad growing revenue base and a broad, er, broad earnings great base. So it's not really about more movies. It's about more theaters and the quality of movies that you put through your platform. And Rich, you are planning to expand more in China, build more theaters in China, where the Chinese government controls what foreign movies actually get shown in the country. And even recently, they pulled Avatar prematurely. Does that at all concern you about staking so much in the Chinese market? It doesn't, and it's largely because I've been going there for 13 years. I've made a lot of relationships. We're in business with 
pretty much every major theater operator in the country. We have excellent relationships with the government. The government is specifically committed to growing cinema in China. There are 5,000 theaters today. They've said there'll be about 25,000 in five years and 10,000 in 10 years, making it the largest cinema market in the world. Uh, there are 20 foreign films in allowed in a year under the quota, and that's been increasing and is continually increasing. So with all the capital flowing into the sector, the increased income levels of demographic and the Chinese people and this commitment, I think it's actually a very good time to expand in China. And our box office has been really impressive. Last year on less than 1% of the screens for Inception, we did 10% of the box office on a similar percentage of the screens. We did 17% of the whole country of China on Tron. So it's, it's actually a key market for us, and I've spent a lot of time learning it and studying about it. We, we just announced a 75 theater deal with Wanda, which is the number one exhibitor in China. And I think we're part of the broader play in China, which is playing to the Chinese consumer and where they need to import various technologies to really provide world-class different things, in our case, entertainment. So I feel extremely good about the Chinese market. All right, Rich Galfond, I've actually been to the Wanda IMAX theaters in China, and they are quite a spectacle. Thanks so much for joining us.